I'm Marcel Swally, that dude. And this week, I want to chop up some wood or throw some hands, starting with Willie McGinnis and that fight and that video. Woo, that was disturbing. Full disclosure, Willie McGinnis, my dog. Respect for Willie McGinnis in terms of being from L.A. like me, a little older than me, so inspired me on that football field, especially going to USC, knowing him throughout all these years. He's from Long Beach. I'm from Compton, South Central. So that type of connection as well, as y'all know what that is. Guys who got it from the mud, as they say. Um, And it's crazy when you watch this video. The first thing that jumps out to me is like, damn, that looked like an ambush. That looked like a straight jacket, like an old Ice Cube song. Straight jacket. What did they try to jack him for, though? It wasn't for his jewelry. It wasn't for what he had on. It wasn't for his clothes. It seemed like they tried to take that dude's soul, like take his spirit. And I'm thinking, you know me, as much as I love me some Willie Mack, and we used to call him Big Back Willie Mack, because <laughs> if y'all ever seen Willie McGinnis in person, even my big ass be like, yo, that's a big dude. Like, Willie McGinnis is the most gigantic six foot five dude I ever seen in my life. Like, his back. It's like Jurassic Park back, like, argh, like just big. Every time I see him, I'm like, ain't no way I'm bigger than him. But by the numbers I am, but not by the size, not by the geometry. So anyway, you look at Willie McGinnis in this situation, and it looks all bad. Like every time I play that video back, I'm trying to narrate it different. Like give Willie the benefit of the doubt. Say something that could help save Willie McGinnis. And I'm like, I'm coming up with nothing. Only thing I come up with, are three questions, three things we need to talk about. What happened, when it happened, and why it happened. Yep, what, when, and why. Let's talk about what happened. Willie and his boys showed up. Now, already I'm like, this is all bad. There are cameras there. Delilah's is the spot, not just in LA. Like, people fly in LA to go to Delilah's. Like, Delilah's is a spot. I've been there maybe three times, four times. Every time I go there, it's somebody super duper uber famous. Seen Drake there twice. And they all in arm's distance. Like they be right by the kitchen, the bar area. You be like, what's up? Say hi. And if you're thirsty or you really know them, you go over there. I mean, I, you know, it's just one of those spots. And when those type of dudes or girls are there, you know what they attract. <laughs> High level attention and some bad ones. It's some fine girls in there. It be cracking in there. So I see why they go. And y'all know why I don't go that much. <laughs> Hell nah, stay off Temptation Island, bro. But I know the spot very well. Uh, Willie walks in with his folks. And this is all bad because why are your folks walking in with you, Willie, on camera? Not giving permission to do anything like this. But if you're going to be so foolish to do something like this, don't be the one that does it. <laughs> what did Chris Carter get in trouble for? And y'all all hypocritical. Now y'all all like, damn, what Chris Carter really say? Have a fall guy. Like, if you're going to do something foolish, have a fall guy. You had like three of them. Willie Mack, let them dudes go in there and do what they're going to do, whatever they're going to do, and then you be in the back. And this is not condoning the behavior. This is just saying, don't be as foolish as the foolish behavior. Separate the goose from the gander. Anyway, I saw that, and I'm like, oh, this is already bad. This is three strikes in one pitch. Walking in with these dudes, first dude stop, turn, like to set the border, set the set the edge. Like we, we playing football out here. Dude setting the edge, like ain't nobody gonna get contained, break contained without me. <laughs> what the hell is this foolishness? So that's what started it. Willie bends down and says something. Now, obviously, nobody knows what he said, but let's check this out. What he said matters, because that could change these charges, because it could go from just, hey, you know, assault, we about to throw these hands and the dude getting up for it. Or you threaten my life. And we know what happened in this incident. It wasn't just hands being thrown, but a bottle being smashed against dude's head, reportedly. So what Willie said, uh, we're not done with trying to figure that one out. What happened? Then all of a sudden, Willie Mack beating him up, sagging. Sagging on video. Big Willie, you 51 years old, bro. Sagging on video, catching a felony at 51 for assault. 
Oh, all bad. All bad. Got three beautiful daughters. Mm, all bad. We'll get through it. We'll talk through this. Um, so the what was a jacking, an ambush. I mean, every time I play this video back, I try to narrate it different. Like, give Willie the, the benefit of... Can't do it. I can't write a script that changes how this is going to look. But we'll see. Now, when did this happen? A lot of people skipping past that part. The win is important. Supposedly it happened on December 9th, but we didn't hear about it till December 19th. Mm. I want y'all to know in 10 days, they already had that video. They probably had that video that night, let alone 10 days later. So when that video is already known privately, oh, they having some private discussions about what's on that video. That's a conversation with Willie. That's a conversation with the victim. That's a conversation with anybody you can to just make sure we're dotting our I's and crossing our T's. Willie, uh, can you give us your version of what we're seeing right here? Ah, and I heard, this is through the grapevine, so don't, don't record me, even though I'm recording my damn self, but, <laughs> oh man, don't quote me on this, but I heard what Willie said didn't necessarily jive with what the public at large saw in that video. Now, at the time, if you're a police officer, you're a detective on this case, you might not even let Willie know you got video. You just want to see, is Willie on your side of the truth? Is Willie going to really cooperate or is Willie going to be somebody you can't believe? Mm, that's that squeeze right there. Whew. So anyway, supposedly what Willie said didn't match to what the video actually showed. Whatever, that could be conjecture. But I just want y'all to be thinking about these things because there's more to it, right? So now we got a what? Beat down, ambush, four dudes looks like, throwing hands. And it was gangster too because they, they walked up to dude and said something Willie Mac did. And dude got up. I swear dude almost dabbed the, the sides of his mouth like he had etiquette. <laughs> it was like, oh, I've been waiting for this. Or I knew this was coming. Either way, why? Didn't even get a chance to finish. Didn't get a chance to finish that meal or get up. All those poor people sitting around and they ain't poor. I don't mean financially poor. Just poor. You imagine eating your food, putting that filet mignon down with the bad one you just met. Let's talk. Let's walk. We about to get it in tonight, girl. And wah, wah, wah. Big ass linebacker over here fighting with his boys. Whoa, that's gangster. Oh, okay. Let's, let's, let's get through not just the what, the beat down, the win. 10 days before we get to see it. So a lot has happened behind the scenes outside of public eye, right? But more importantly, why? In the locker room, we learned something real fast. As y'all can see, for those who will see this video or see clips, I'm going to start letting clips out of my video, of my podcast. I heard y'all. Y'all love hearing me, but y'all love seeing me more. <laughs> Oh, this don't crack. This black don't crack. Um, in all seriousness, the why is so important. In the locker room, we used to always say, every time we saw dudes scrapping, whether it was in the locker room, on the field, in life at large, as soon as we saw two dudes scrapping, we always said, what's her name or how much? <laughs> it's just that simple, bro. What's her name? Who y'all fighting? What's her name? Mm-hmm. Jeanette, okay, Jeanette got y'all in a twist. Or how much? What he hit you for? What he owe you? That simple. How many commas, fool? Because y'all throwing them hands like y'all really mean it. What's her name or how much? Now, in this situation, I'm trying to map that on to Mac, and I'm like, damn, this over a broad? This over a lady? This over a woman? This over a pronoun? Lee <laughs> at 51? As much as Willie's been through in his life and seen and I'm sure done hung with and done had fun with, I'm sure. I was like, dog, this can't be about her. No, sir, not me. But that only leaves me with one other option. How much? Dude, owe you money? What kind, what, the, the, what kind of money does he owe Willie Mac that's going to affect Willie Mac's bank account? Like, Willie Mac got them commas. I know he got seven, eight digits sitting somewhere. Chilling, chilling. But remember I told y'all before about principle? 
AL versus Principal LE. This could be over Principal. And one thing I know about Willie Mack, that dude is Principal. Like, he bought that code, the culture, that life, that street life. Like, don't disrespect Willie Mack. And how do I know this? Because Willie Mack, my first introduction to him personally wasn't on the football field. I think it was at TGI Fridays back in the marina. Old school L.A., if y'all know what I'm talking about. like This is like mid-late 90s, <laughs> right? And uh, all I remember is Willie Mack was there and tables were flying. And that was the first time I saw Willie Mack. And I can't say he was in it, but he was closer to it than I was. That's all I knew. <laughs> I was like, Willie Mack and him, thanks. I was like, damn, because I was like, that's Willie McGinnis. Like, Living legend, Willie Mack. And then I was like, oh, they over there throwing things around Willie Mack. And Willie was so big, you could see him no matter what was going on. And more importantly, wasn't scared, so probably wasn't moving. <laughs> that was the first time. That wasn't the last time I seen some pig pen dust kicking up and Willie Mack somewhere around it, right? So he had this rep for us who knew. And maybe this wasn't the national reputation because the national reputation was Super Bowl champion, Willie McGinnis, baller, beast which was all true as well. New England Patriot, monster. Uh, what we knew was like, damn, wherever Willie was, you know, don't mess around. Don't fuck around with Willie. That's all I knew. And I knew not to, not just because of what I had seen, not just because of the reputation, because that dude was big as hell. I was like, hell no, that dude bigger than me. Forget y'all. But what brought it all home for me and why I always had a deep, Deep respect for Willie Mack was two things. One, he saved my life before. Real talk. Two, he saved my life again. <laughs> two times. Real talk. Let's talk about these stories. All right. So I had a homeboy named Dion. Uh, we were from a group uh, crew. We went to high school together, St. Monica High School in Santa Monica. I transferred from Westchester. That was like my best friend at school, I would say, me and Dion him and I LB, but Nail B, he went to Inglewood. I ain't gonna bore y'all with that. Here's the thing. Diaro and I had a group where Tanzi as well called FAY. Y'all know what FAY stands for? Fuck all y'all. That was the name of our group. Real talk. <laughs> Crazy. And why? It wasn't gangster. It wasn't a crew to be hard. It was everything was hard around us. Everybody was trying to be gangster. Everybody was trying to be preppy. Everybody was trying to be a misfit. Everybody was trying to be all badass. So we were like, F-A-Y. Fuck all y'all. <laughs> we really were. Like us three nice guy kind of nerds, artists, baller, rapper. That's who we were. We were like, man, F-A-Y, dog. So no lie, everywhere we went, we see somebody doing something silly, dumb, Doing too much, doing three much, we just be like F A Y, and that kind of gave us like some cool points to keep distance from the B S, and that's how we were. Why I bring that story up? Now you fast forward. I'm in the league. I got a Lexus G S four hundred bubble eye. Blip, when they first came out, like when Puffy got his or whoever the hell Mace got one, I got one. Same time, whatever the hell that was, I don't know. But like I got it that soon. And I'm flossing. I remember we were on Santa Monica, some club that's shut down now, Santa Monica Boulevard. And I'm leaving. And I'm good for the night. I got my numbers. I had my, like, whatever, StarTac flip phone or <laughs> my Motorola Montel Jordan readout. This is how you do it, Pager. I'm good for the night. I already know what's going on. As long as I get home, she's going to be there too, right? So I'm good. And I'm a little selfish. Y'all know how it gets when y'all the one who won already. <laughs> Come on, let's go, let's go. <laughs> oh, you got a curfew. I'm yelling at my boys, hurry up, hurry up. And they jump in the back because they they ain't win yet. They they empty-handed. So they're like, man, I got a parking lot. It. But they parking a lot in, it, in my new car. Back windows down. They just yelling at girls, hollering at them, left, right, left, right, right. All of a sudden, you could just feel the temperature change. But it wasn't... By Fahrenheit. <laughs> it was by fear. <laughs> it was by fear, bro. You could feel the heightened tension. Like I just something just told me, like, what's up? And next thing I know, I saw a dude walk away from my car. Like, oh, one of those, all right, all right, all right. And you know what that means. When somebody say all right three times, ain't nothing all right. I was like, oh shit. 
So I'm looking at this dude. I'm in my like rear view, side view, and trying to peep over my shoulder, not doing too much because you don't want to cause attention because then he just going to bust. So I'm looking like, damn, this dude mad at. And then I can hear my boys in the back, Diaro, just macking on machine gun macking. I'm like, that's too much, y'all. So I'm putting two and two together. I'm like, oh, this dude probably hollered at this dude, girl, or something. I'm just thinking like some wild stuff. So I'm trying to speed off. Can't speed off. End of a club. Y'all know how it is. You in that line waiting to get out. And this ain't no valet line. This is J GP, general parking. <laughs> I'm like, ah. And I'm in the Lex, brand new. So everybody already looking at me. So as you know, the code goes, at least it used to. If your car saying a lot, like doing a lot, you shouldn't do a lot too. <laughs> like you should be subdued and just like, yeah, respect. Oh, thank you. Oh, respect. You know, thank you. Don't be as hot as your car because then somebody will be like, oh, this fool high sign. Y'all saw Menace doing too much, doing too much, going to get you twisted, right? So I'm low key. Dude's coming back. I can see him walking and grabbing by his waist. Now I know damn well. He had a belt on. I know damn well he wasn't sagging that hard. I was like, ah, he reaching. And literally I'm thinking, jump out the car. But then I'm like, if you jump out the car, you're going to get busted in the back. I'm like, and I don't know why I'm thinking it, but I'm just telling you what I'm thinking. Then I'm like, yell at your boys. Come on, man. Like, stop doing it. Whatever. And I'm like, that ain't going to help. Then I was like, we all should just run. But I was like, that ain't going to work. This is all happening in one second. Next thing I know, dude getting real close. And I'm like, now I just got to be a good Samaritan, like hope that I'm all wrong. I'm paranoid. I'm PTSD from stuff I've been through before. And I just got a negative image of this dude. He's just coming by just to say, man, I need to see the interior of this Lex. And he coming close, close. And all of a sudden, big back Willie Mac. No, 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 no. All I saw was Willie Mac, like, like Superman, like just swoop through. No, 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 no. That's little homie. That's little homie. And I can see the dude like, oh, 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 his boy, him, his boy, oh, boy, they over there woofing. I'm just saying like, yeah, what? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh God. I'm literally in, on the inside relieved and crying. Like, and Willie Mack come up. He's like, wow, you better get out of here, boy. You, your boy's doing too much. And we did. That was incident one. I don't know what was going to happen. I don't know if the dude was just going to gun butt us. I don't know if the dude was really going to just try and scare us. I don't know if the dude was just trying to scare my boy. But point is, Willie Mack came in to save the day. Here's the second time Willie Mack <laughs> saved my life. And y'all going to see that these stories, whether it was Willie being the good guy or Willie on that video being the bad guy, this stuff is around Willie. Like, Willie really street, dog. <laughs> it's crazy. <sighs> I was at uh, another club on Santa Monica. And don't y'all start saying I'm gay. Because everybody always say, every club on Santa Monica is gay. And it's funny because I was at the gay club. It was a club that, uh, God, I forget the name of it. But everybody in L.A. knows it. It's the number one nightclub for alcohol and bar sales, whatever the hell that means. Basically, they make the most money every night. Uh, I'll get the name of it. But anyway, um, I'm at this club, and it's, you know, the night that all the ballers go, all the players go. So I'm there, and uh, all I remember from that night, two things. I got there hella early because I love going to the club early, especially if I'm buying the table. And this is post tables, you know. I'll tell you that story another time when the first time and first day ever they made me buy a table. I was like, what happened to the VIP tickets? <laughs> I remember that day. It was wild. But anyway, I'm sitting up in here and I'm like, oh, snap. I'm early. It's like 1030. Even for L.A., that's early. Right. So I like to see everybody come in. I like to see the prettiest girls come in. Number one, number two, number 20. I like to see it all build. I like to see that. Plus, I, you know, I'm I'm not too cool for school. So. I'm a sociologist. I'm over here reading people's patterns and behavior. I'm trying to figure out what's cracking, right? So I'm hella early. And all of a sudden, the hostess comes up to me. And she's like, um, yeah, I think we put you at the wrong table. I was like, wrong table? I've been here like an hour or so. And y'all ain't say wrong table. Who's, whose table is it? Where am I supposed to be? She's like, well, we just want to move you over here if this is okay with you. And I was like, over where? Now, I'm already a bottle or two in. So I'm like. I'm spending real money versus somebody who's just going to come with less time and how much money they're going to spend. So I'm, I'm already full of myself. This is the time where I'm getting too many sacks. So it's hard to talk to me. I'm like, what? And 
She's like, over here. And I looked, I was like, eh, they're trying to put me in a corner. Hell no. Nah. I don't spend too much money already. About to spend too much more money. Y'all caught that? Uh, no, not moving. And then she looked at me. And I might be reading into this, but she looked at me like, you just made a bad decision. But I was like, all right, everyone. <laughs> Next thing I know, she come back with backup. Like, you know, the dudes who work there, not just security, but like dudes who work there, general managers and all that stuff. All right, all right. I gave them the same story. Man, I don't want to move over there. That's whack. And then all of a sudden, I see this mob come in, and it was Suge Knight. Now, this is Suge Knight, like, Suge Knight. <laughs> I was like, you know, the legend still is big, right? And I'm like, ah. Oh. And then one of the dudes hit me like, yeah, that was his table, but all good. We put him over there. And immediately I was saying, uh, y'all, y'all left. Y'all left that part out. Y'all buried the headline. Y'all kind of told me I took Suge Knight's table. But then part of me felt like, hell yeah. Well, they know that dude up in here. I can take they, The fact that they even allowed me to take Suge Knight's table, I was like, hell yeah. Who run LA, homie? <laughs> but oh, that wasn't the end of that story. Oh, wait, it gets worse. <laughs> so the party on, party on. I remember Game was rapping. That was something crazy. Game like freestyle. Now, I was so caught up in just hanging and chilling and partying and macking that I didn't even pay attention fully. But I was like, I caught a couple bars. I was like, damn. And I heard then later you hear the legend of like gang used to go to clubs and just bust, just rap. And I was like, oh, that's that dude that was rapping. Crazy enough, right? Anyway, um, I ain't getting any side eye from Suge the whole night, none of that stuff. But the point is, when I was leaving, I'm about to leave. And I, once again, man, the Spidey sense, I felt them hyenas. I felt them boys. I felt them, <laughs> them heaters looking at me kind of like, mm. So I guess between the time that I was like, nah, I ain't giving up my table and the end of the club, the story turned into, oh, this dude tried to punk Suge for his table, had him in the corner, and then was high sign the whole night. Because I like to dance. I like to mag. I like to sweat. I like to do too much, right? So I'm like, oh, snap. Anyway. Somebody hit me like, Wally, just get to your car, man. You're good. Now, at this time, I got an all-white Rolls Royce Phantom. That part. <laughs> I'm doing the most. Understand. Uh-oh. Siri. Should have got Siri from jail on my head. So here we go. Um, I'm like, all right. Y'all ain't got to tell me twice to get out of somewhere. You know, <laughs> like the joke, like, as soon as I hear this, get out. I'm... <laughs> You can't even see the bottom of my Nikes. I'm out. So I jumped in the car. I forgot who I was with. I forgot who was around me. But I remember being boxed in because, you know, they put the car right in front. Big white Phantom, probably next to Suge's big red one. <laughs> but once again, here go these dudes. And they, you know, it's a different look between somebody looking at your car like, oh, that's fresh. And somebody looking at you like, oh, that's going to be real fresh when it's mine. And I just felt it like, oh, these. And once again. Willie Mack says something to somebody over their own shook side. And they just all of a sudden, two of the dudes came up to me. Oh, what's up, man? Respect, baby. Respect how you ball. Respect for your car. Respect for you tonight. I saw you over there getting it in. And I swear, if Willie didn't come over there and say something to somebody, I don't think he was going to come up to me with those sentiments. So let's get back to Willie for real, real like. All that's good and dandy. If you need me to testify, Willie, I'll tell him those stories. I, I know you got a big heart, but mm, you lost your mind on this one. I wish I knew different. I wish I could say different, but it just looked bad. What's going to look worse is how it's going to play out in terms of the NFL Network, because I said NFL Network. There's a video, and we all know how that Ray Rice situation played out. You heard one thing, but then when you saw the video, you're like, oh, oh goodness. And we ain't seen Ray Rice since. Uh, man, how do you work for the NFL and this video is out? That's going to be the rub on that one. If y'all ask me what I think, I think it's all bad. Actually, I don't even have to think it. Uh, I heard from a police officer, quote, unquote, it's all bad for Willie McGinnis. Uh, Ugly, ugly situation, man. 20, 30 years later, all these stories I just told y'all, 20, 30 years old, right? 
and Willie finds himself still in this position, man. Mm. I know when people say you got to grow up, sometimes you like really try to pinpoint what that is. I think one of the things that they really mean is the same things you got yourself into, the same things you were surrounded by, the same things you were about should not be the same things 20, 30 years later. That's kind of the thesis of all this, right or wrong. Obviously, that video, I can't see right in it. But I got love for Willie McGinnis. I can't lie to y'all. So hopefully, somehow, some right can come from this. Uh.